Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the savior. This is a continuation of my series on how to give and teach your own private English students here in Japan. For this video, we are going to talk about how much should you charge. So what should your hourly rate be and what should you charge for your trial lessons? So, this is a very um, complex question, um, so to speak, so I'm going to try to give you my best answer that I can. So, trial lessons in Japan are basically, just as it says, your very first lesson. So some people choose to make trial lessons entirely free, while others just charge a reduced fee. Others who charge so little, there's no fee at all. I personally do not recommend offering free trial lessons because, again, you are going to deal with more perverts, creeps, and time wasters. The fact that you are charging your students will automatically deter a large portion of people who are just going to waste your time. The second thing that you want to do is decide how much that you charge for the trial lesson. In my opinion, I say that a fair amount to charge and that you should never go under is $10 or 1,000 yen is the absolute minimum that you should charge. This will be more than enough or should be more than enough to cover your train fare as well as, you know, if you do choose to, you know, get something small like a simple drink, you have an extra dollar or so left over to do that. So basically, it's the equivalent of, you know, paying nothing or charging nothing because you're probably going to use all of this money um, just getting there and back. But this way, you're not taking anything out of your own wallet. So everything's being covered except for your time, of course. If you want to, though, and you're experienced with teaching, then I recommend charging $15 an hour or 1,500 yen. I only recommend this if you are an experienced teacher. Can you do this if you have no experience? Yes, but I'll explain why you should or should not later. And again, this is all your own choice. I'm just giving you my own two cents. So, um, I would charge $15 if you have experience teaching and you think you are a good teacher. With emphasis on, you think you are a good teacher. So, <laughs> as far as your hourly rate goes, um, students in Japan normally pay anywhere from about $40 to $60 an hour to get private English lessons at a legitimate um, eikaiwa or, you know, English conversation school. However, even though you think you'd be worth more as a native speaker or as a private teacher, Yes, some people will be willing to pay you more than that $60 an hour or even the $50 or $40, but because there is a swamp full of non-native speakers as well as native speakers who have no experience or you know, are lazy or whatever the case is, there are a lot of people that are trying to drive down the price, so it's very competitive. However, you want to decide what you want to do. I personally do not recommend charging anything less than 2,000 yen, but to be honest, as a native speaker, your price should never go under 3,000 yen. You are never worth anything less than $30. If the student tells you that they can't afford it or asks you to lower their price, you don't want that student. They're a waste of your time. So I would personally not charge anything less than $30, even as a brand new teacher. Unless you just know that you suck at teaching, I would never go under $30 an hour. However, if you are very experienced, you have a good plan lesson, you've taught students before several times, you know what you're doing, they don't recommend raising your price to about 5,000 yen an hour. Your goal is to be competitive with, you know, the real big schools. You don't want to charge the same as them, you don't want to charge more, because then they will always be comparing you to that big school, and they will feel cheated, because more than likely, you do not come with, you know, a whole entire curriculum that you wrote yourself. Even although yours might be better, this is just the way that it's going to be viewed. You're not going to be seen as worth that much. So your students are either going to book just one hour lessons or they're simply not going to rebook with you. They'll probably just do a trial lesson or call you when they're bored and they want to see your cute face again. But you probably aren't going to be able to retain as many students. You will find a few people that will be willing to pay you the $60, $70 an hour that you're charging, but most people will not even contact you because you want too much. Also. Keep in mind, if you charge too little, you will make students not want to use you as a teacher too. They will think that it's a scam or that you're a bad teacher because they cannot understand why anyone would want to charge significantly less than $30 an hour. This also includes those who are just charging $20. It's okay for a trial lesson. Trial lessons in Japan are normally free or no more than about $10. But in your case, <laughs> if this is your regular rate, it makes them think they're not getting a good teacher, that you don't have good skills, you're not a native speaker, etc. So keep these things in mind. You don't want to charge too little because then you don't seem trustworthy. If you charge too much, your students will feel cheated. So I say a good balanced amount of charge is somewhere between $30 and $40 an hour. I recommend $30 for new teachers and if you're experienced, I say keep it at about $40 or $45 an hour for your hourly rate. 
you can decide if you want to charge the students extra um, to purchase you, you know, beverages and food and or cover your transportation. Most of your students will voluntarily do this, but you will come across some who need a little extra nudge. <laughs> Personally, I don't normally make my students buy me something to eat or drink if they don't choose to, but I do always make sure that my transportation is covered. And this is another reason why you want to make sure that your students are not being charged too much, because if you're asking them to pay you 60 or $70 an hour, and then you want them to pay, you know, 700 yen to cover your transportation, you're being a bit ridiculous, especially if the lesson isn't really even an hour, or if you're coming late and you know you don't have a real curriculum, it's just conversational, you have to be reasonable with what you're charging. The amount that you're charging your students should match what you're actually teaching them. If you're charging them $70, they should be getting $70 worth of teaching, $70 worth of experience from you, and $70 worth of you know good work, good material. So um, beyond just that, as far as the distance that you travel, which this should probably be another video, you want to make sure that whatever you're charging for the hourly rate, once again, that it actually covers your train fare. This should automatically be so. So for example, if your student is you know, really far away and it's costing you a thousand yen to get there and back, you're now cutting your $30 an hour rate to really you're just getting $20 an hour or 2,000 yen. That's profit, but not as much as it could be. Remember, you have to account for your time on the train, your time to get ready, your time planning the lesson. You want to at least be getting $30 at the end of this. So if I were you, I would charge at least $30 for the flat rate and then have them cover you know, the transportation separately. So really, you're, you end up charging about $40 an hour regardless. This is another reason why, once again, you don't want to charge too much either because, like I just said, they don't want to feel like they're spending too much money on you and like they should either find another private teacher or go back to whatever school they're coming from. You also um, want to make sure that you don't switch around your prices a lot. If your prices seem to fluctuate a lot, um, your current students will quit. They will normally not be okay with having to pay more. They'll wonder why are you charging more for something they were able to get for cheaper in the past. And I will also uh, quickly comment on that as well. It's okay to start off at a lower rate um, in order to get yourself established, to gain a couple of students, to get experience if you have no experience teaching, but you want to make sure that you use this time to become serious and really um, get into the habit of teaching your own students and learn so that you can charge more. It's going to be really hard to go from you know just charging $10 to now asking your students to pay you $50 an hour. And to be professional, out of respect for your first students that took a chance with you, I would personally not um, ever change the rate with your first few students. I would leave them at whatever rate you are already charging them unless you move and it's un you're unable to teach them for whatever reason. Otherwise, I feel like you should always have some type of respect for them since they were the ones who got you started. But that's just my own personal two cents and opinion. In order to be professional, simply don't change your price around. Um, you know, decide how much you want to charge before you start teaching your students. Even although I personally um, charge between $30 to $40 an hour normally when I personally teach, my students always tell me, they're like, oh, your lessons are so cheap. I used to pay $60, um, you know, at this school for, you know, an hour for 45 minutes. And I'm like, to me, I feel like charging you $40 is a lot because really you're paying me 50 because at the end of our lesson, you're covering my train fare, but okay. <laughs> so you might feel like you're cheating your students. You might feel like you're not worth that much, but trust me, you are. And also do not confuse the amount of uh, replies that you receive um, with, you know, what you're worth. And what I mean by that is, obviously Japan is a much smaller country than America is, and there are a lot of teachers here that are teaching private lessons, more so than there are those who are actually, um, you know, working um, with actual visas, because a lot of people are actually here working illegally online, which you're not supposed to do. So, keep that in mind. There's much more competition, and there are a lot of people that are using these sites to get lessons from non-native speakers, because they're not really trying to learn English, but instead, they're trying to date these people and have sex with them, find easy foreigners, basically. Um, never, ever, ever negotiate your rate with students. You will have people that will contact you and tell you that they used to only pay 1500 with another teacher and that this other teacher charges, you know, 3000 yen, why is yours 5000 Do not change your price for students. Once again, you're dealing with somebody who is a time waster, pervert, creep. They're not serious about you. They saw how much your lessons were before they booked with you. Do not let them change the price later. Plus, what's going to stop them from asking you to change your rate once more? <laughs> so again, um, you know, stick with, you know, whatever price you chose, stay with it. You will eventually find students. And don't, um, you know, get it confused. Don't think that because you're not getting students yet or that it's taking a while, 
that you're not going to find one. You don't want to just attract any old students. You only want good students. You want the best students. Someone who's going to be serious. The more you charge, the more serious students that you're going to attract for the most part. People that are trying to waste time, even those that are creeps and perverts, they're generally not going to want to pay a lot of money. They're going to try to get a foreigner for as cheap as possible. And with that said and done, generally the more you charge, the more secure you can be um, with you know knowing that you're going to have a decent person, a real and or a good student. You're not going to have a time waster, a pervert, a creep, or anything else like that. So do not let someone you know try to convince you that you're worth less because they can get a lesson from someone else. Tell them, hey, that's nice. Maybe you should contact that other teacher. That's not me. It's not normal for Japanese people to negotiate even in Japan. They know it's rude and disrespectful, but they think they can get away with it um, you know, through you, talking to you, especially if you happen to not be a native speaker. As a native speaker, you should already know better that you're worth more than $15 or $20 an hour. So do not settle for anything less than $30. And even if they're offering you $30, if your rate is 35 or if your rate is 40, do not go down from that rate. I have literally had people who had money. I had a woman who was her, she was the wife of a doctor who was filthy rich. She lived very close to the train station. She had a gigantic, her apartment was basically a penthouse, I think. Huge, very beautiful, nice apartment. It had, you know, card entry. There wasn't even a house key. She could talk to doors. So it was just really weird and super futuristic. And her child was just two years old. And I was teaching, you know, play, play kitty lessons or whatever. And she did not feel like I was worth, I was only charging $30 because she was a kid. But she felt like I was not worth that much. So she was okay with paying for the trial lesson. And after the trial lesson, she tells me, she's like, oh, you know, look, can we lower it to 2,000 yen? Like, you know, I'm just asking you to play with her. Like, you don't have to, you know, plan any lessons. And so I told her, like, I do not negotiate my lessons. They're not for negotiation. I, you know, charge this much for that. That's the lowest I'm willing to charge. And so she's like, Oh, well, you know, I guess I understand since you're a teacher, like, okay, I'll be all right with that. And so I thought about it later and it was like, you know what? Anyone who even asks or tries to negotiate, I would not ever teach them. I would, you know, just end it right there, apologize to them in advance and tell them that you don't feel comfortable teaching them or that you're not available to them anymore. And the reason being is you want to avoid future problems. You don't want someone to decide they're not going to pay you in the future or to, you know, cancel lessons in the future. And of course, when they find another cheaper teacher, they're probably going to go over to that teacher because they clearly don't value you. They don't care about your degree. They don't care about, you know, your education. They don't care about you as a teacher they just want someone cheap they want someone cheap and preferably that's native and that should not ever be your description so let that person go let them be they want cheap okay go ahead and find cheap I don't take people back after they try to negotiate prices with me that's it if they try to negotiate locations I do the same thing if I say I'm not gonna teach at your house I mean I'm not teaching at your house old man <laughs> so you know stick stick with your guns don't be afraid don't, you know, try to, you know, change your mind to make another student happy. Don't be desperate for money. It looks bad as a teacher, period. But you're also going to, you know, attract creeps by doing this. And there's nothing that's going to stop them from trying to lower your rate again in the future. They might say they don't even have their money to pay you today. Then they'll say, oh, can I pay you next week? I'll see you next Friday. Anyway, we always see each other on Friday. So <laughs> you don't want to put yourself in a position like that. So that's that. Decide what you want to charge based off of your own experience what kind of, you know, materials that you're going to use and teach with, as well as decide, you know, what do you feel like you're personally worth? Do you feel like you're worth, you know, $50 or $60 an hour, honestly? <laughs> or, if you're being honest with yourself, do you feel like you should be charging less? Keep in mind, once again, if your student feels like you're worth the money and then has your lesson, but you're a horrible teacher, they are not going to book you again and they're not going to spread great words about you. You're not going to have a good, you know, recommendation from that student because they're going to be like, wow, I just blew $60 on this moron. He spent the whole time just staring at me, didn't know how to lead the conversation, didn't come with the curriculum, wasn't dressed professionally. It's just going to look really, really bad. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below, or you can email any questions that you have to me as well. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'd really appreciate it if you would follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be making more videos. Bye.